Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame, Jamie Curtis Barrett to break. Best is seven to reach the last 64. Hmm. Well, that's not too clever to start with, short of pace. Just as well the cue ball's landed there to the side cushion. Well, the last thing Jamie wanted to do was give um, Judd an early chance, but he's not taking the red on, he's playing safe. Just uh, getting used to the conditions. Yeah, he's been playing well of late Trump. He's uh, this season's leading century break maker. He's at 53. He's been playing well in matches and tournaments. He's not been winning, and you just wonder if it's all just building up towards Sheffield. Will that be his time? We'll see in a few weeks, because that's all it is now, a few weeks. It's amazing how it comes around. much more than that. He would have left the red down the table there. The winner will play Craig Stedman, who was a winner earlier on. 4-1 over Brandon Sargent. Yes, Jamie here came to the Q School, which is no mean feat in itself. That's very competitive. Came to the second event. <laughs> actually, not quite true what I've said. He didn't actually come to the second event. There were four places for players who did the best in the first two. So there's 12 places, four from the first, four from the second, and then a little order of merit. So to be scrupulously accurate, that's how he got on the tour. But he's on the tour, that's the main thing. I know him quite well, actually, uh, David. He's a nice lad. Good player. Good test for him today, though, against Judd. First red still to go down then. But I think he's blocked the, uh, the middle pocket. Early days, of course, in this match, but as we say, best of sevens, though. They, they are sprints. You have to try and hit the ground running if you can. Don't think he's left anything on here, though. Quite the plant. Well, he's played that quite well. <laughs> Just about cover the one down the table. I think you can see some of it. Well, he can't see enough of this to take it to the middle, but he might be able to take it to the corner and try and go on the blue. But the only danger with that, of course, is the fact that he'll be leaving a red to this corner pocket. But I don't think he's got much choice here, especially where the cue ball is. Might have to take this on. Well, he has done. Not quite. Well, he's, he knew what he was leaving if he'd have it missed it. Yeah, there was no route back to bulk from the other reds, so 
it had to take that on, really. One. So, first point on the board then goes to Judd Trump. Do this a lot now. He's switching to his right Nine. hand more and more. And there's no reason why he shouldn't if he can uh, play with his other hand as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a few of them doing it now. 16. It seems a long time ago now that Ronnie O'Sullivan caused outrage at the World Championship by daring to play left-handed in a match where he wiped the floor with Elaine Robidoux. But uh, Elaine didn't take too kindly to it, did he? No, wasn't best pleased, but of course then he didn't realise what was to follow, and I think he realises now. Yeah, I don't think Ronnie was taking the Mickey run. I think it was just the fact that he's, he's said before that it, it, sometimes it makes him concentrate harder when he switches to playing left-handed. I think he's still the best at doing that. Well, that's gone slightly wrong. He, he's still on the black, but he's high on it. Yep, well played. Well, he's hidden behind the pink for the left on reds, but still has this one to the right corner. Good chance here for Judd. There's uh, plenty of reds open. It's difficult for me where my allegiances lie here, David. I'd like to see Judd play well, but I'd like to see Jamie win as well, if you can. Well, it, uh, it's a great experience for Jamie Barrett, I think, and let's hope we do get to see him show us what he can do. It's not easy, though, when you're playing someone in banging form like Trump, mm. who, of course, is so used to these conditions. 48. Forty-nine. Jump players, as we often see with this fellow, like any of the top stars, if you give them table time, they get uh, better and better. Well, that's seven reds, seven blacks. We had a maximum at the Championship League yesterday. It was unbelievable. It was Mark Davis. Now, bear in mind, Mark turned pro 1991, and until January, had never made one in a tournament. Made one actually at the Championship League, and then a month, month or so later, made another one in the same tournament. Like buses, isn't it? <laughs> oh, hang on, though. Hang on. Don't go behind that red. Oh, I think he's played on the plant here. 64. Yes, I think that's, that's pretty well set from the angle he's coming from. Well done. 65. Well, he's made two. As you see the plant again, two one four sevens, one in the Antwerp Open four years ago, German Masters two years ago. Yeah,
1973. Well, he's still going, as you can see. Ten reds, ten blacks. This would be uh, a way to start our coverage, wouldn't it? If he could make another one. We've had 129 now in tournament play. As I say, he had one yesterday in Coventry. Mark Davis. 81. Just a bit low on the black here. He wanted to be high on it just to screw up for the open red. He's going to have to play a cannon. And uh, this could go wrong. Especially to stay on the red perfectly for the next black. Well, he's caught them thin. Keep going, keep going. Oh, could have done with a little bit more. I wonder if he'll take the double on here. Stand down for the black. 88. Well, he could play this, but he's got to play it either around the table or play it with a lot of check side, left hand side on the cue ball. I just wonder whether he might contemplate the double. It would definitely be on the black. And he'll get the awkward one out of the way. Well, if this goes in, it's definitely on. Go on, get in. Get it in, it looks wide. Oh, what a shame. Yes, he was nicely on the black as well, but the red stayed out, and Judd Trump's break ends at 88. And I think Jamie Barrett is going to play on just to get used to the table here, which is, uh, I think, a good idea. Just pot a few balls. Well, that was the idea. I'll make the maximum price 15,000. We had one in Germany, Tom Ford. And this is the third ranking event since. Well, the shootout was a ranking event, but I'm sure the prize can't have counted there. It wasn't, it wasn't even a century. Frank conceded. Joe Frank Barrett Trump. concedes, so no maximum for Trump, but he takes the opening frame with that 88 break. I'm sure he would have made the 147 had the double gone in, but anyway, it didn't. But he leads here in Gibraltar by one frame to nil. The full ranking event, the 16th ranking event of the season. We've still got three more to come. Players' Championship, China Open, and World Championship. 19 ranking events, incredible. We were down to six, six or seven years ago. Bit of perspective there for some of the people in the game who like to air their grievances. There are grievances to air sometimes, but as I say, a bit of perspective. Things have changed dramatically in recent years for the better yep yeah, there's never had it so good stop moaning just get on with it John Astley is uh, the latest winner who's beaten Andreas Plona 4-1 Jimmy White's 3-1 up against Kurt Dunham Heading for a meeting with Joe Perry later on. Dave Gilbert, he was another one playing in Coventry yesterday. He's 3 1 up against Hossein Vafaye, Iran. Jamie Jones, 3 1 up against China's Meiji Wen. John Higgins has started against Dominic Dale. It's a tough match that for, for Dale when Higgins is, is just sort of rushed to get here after that win yesterday in Coventry. I think that's what Barry said last week, though. He said, you don't get tied when you're winning, winning titles. Just go on automatic pilot. Well, that was tough over the brown. So half a chance here for Jamie on this red down the top cushion. Not easy. I just wonder if you can see the one near the pink to the middle as we watch that. Never going to be easy over the brown. He's taking the one to the centre. Well played. Two or three reds open here. Been a little bit unlucky just to land above the green mm, doesn't fancy it Jamie Curtis Barrett one no it's been a tough season for 
Barrett, uh, but of course that's the another good innovation is that new players now have a two-year card. In years gone by, you had one year, and of course you on a two-year system, ranking point system, it's very very hard. But uh, it gives you a chance to settle in and doesn't put you under so much pressure in your first year. Well, it's virtually impossible to stay on, uh, David. I got on you know, I just, like one year. You have to get yourself into last 16s and quarterfinals to accumulate enough points. But I think that was one of the innovations and the correct one that they made it into a two-year card. You can manoeuvre yourself into a position the first year and then consolidate in the second. Back of opportunity now, of course, with all the events that's around on the calendar. Pretty much the same ongoing next year as well. With a few pluses, I think. Just caught that a little bit on the thick side and hasn't got the cue ball past the bolt line, but it's okay. Little tempt here on the right hand side for Judd. Uh, is he taking this on? Probably. Although Judd won the uh, opening frame, it's a bit, uh, bit of bits and pieces really. Not found his long game yet. Well, he could have done with covering all of that red. Well, he can see some of that red down the table, but what does he do with it? Well, it was nearly very good. But I think Judd will be taking this red on here on the left-hand side. Oh, is he? Just going to play a safety. Well, there's plenty there. If either player can get in. off the red. Just got to be careful here. Well played. Well, that's a great return. <coughs>
Again, another great return. Oh dear. So that good safety then from Jamie has created this opening for him. Now then, what can he do with this? Yes, he needs to do something, doesn't he? Because he won't necessarily get that many chances like this in the match. But this is a definite opportunity to score. Yeah, he's, he's got to, you know, make his mark here against Judd, obviously. Don't need him. Uh, don't need what? to tell him that. He uh, texted me this morning, said he was looking forward to the challenge. Well, that's just gone a little bit too far. Probably have to play the one near the Six. yellow pocket now. Yeah, just about three or four inches too far. I'm hoping to be on one to this left corner and then stay on the pink. Plan B. Yeah. Seven. May have just been a slight kick. I'll go back to what I said earlier. They are using this the new ball polisher for the cue ball before all matches. Sean Murphy is uh, he's now on this thing called the Players' Commission, which uh, just aims to give the players more of a voice. And he's his number one priority is stamping out kicks. It's been something he's uh, had in his sights for a long time. I think Alan McManus is on though as well, isn't he? Mm. Twelve. So he's not on the red to this left corner, and this one's awkward. Just get into this one with all those reds in the way. There you see, just slightly awkward. Mm, well, he's done well there. Yes, he did. That was bang in the middle of the pocket. It's all about technique there, keeping everything still, the head and everything like that. Oh, went with pace and overdid it. Jamie Curtis Barrett. He's got away with that. If he catches the pink, the red's on. Just wonder whether these two reds were planned. Judd trying to play a cheeky double. Wasn't dissimilar to the one he played to try and get the maximum in the last frame. Now, there is a red on here for Jamie to this left centre. He can get himself onto the black, but again, it's, it's a tough pot. But if it goes in, the rewards might be there. Oh, we didn't want that. <coughs> that could have finished anywhere. One. Well, he had a great chance. And uh, he's only 14 points in front as Trump comes to the table. Not this one so much. It was when he was in before, missed that blue. Nine. Judd Trump lost 9-8 to Stuart Bingham a couple of weeks ago in the Welsh Open 
final the next morning literally the next morning they're playing each other again in that championship league and that also went to decide the Trump won 3-2 it was a rather pyrrhic victory really but uh, 17 well, full credit to the pair of them neither even considered withdrawing just got on the motorway there they were the next day ready for another tournament yeah proper professionals Yes, I was talking to Stuart actually in Coventry, asking him about Prestatin. I wasn't sure whether Pontins was still going and whether they were still having tournaments. He said he heard there was a pro-am there recently. He was gutted he couldn't play in it. Clash with uh, one of these tournaments. Because <laughs> he won plenty there in his time. Overdone that slightly. Yeah, it did jump a little bit actually. 32. Not sure whether you can avoid that red there behind the black. It might be able to just stun past it. Yep, I'll play it. 33. Well, could have done with a little bit more, but he's got a good angle here to go into the two reds near the blue. That will certainly open things up. Well, that uh, could have finished better. It was a good cannon. Deserved more. 40. Well, I need a good pot here to keep the break going. And it was. 41. Wow, tough crowd in. I thought that was a good pop. Well, quite a few, I imagine, have been watching Jimmy White, who's just won 4-1 against Kurt Dunham. So White will play Perry later. Now, this looks like it's gone wrong for Trump, unless he, well, I'm not sure he can get through to the second red. So that looks like end of break. He's 30 in front. Having to settle for the safety. Judd Trump, 44. It's not too bad. A little tempt here, though. It's a good cue ball. A little nudge on the yellow helps as well. You can play off the one near the blue. Just got to be careful, doesn't it? This is too thick. Foul. Jog trog four. Or too thin. There you are, that was some billiard shot. Well, he's got away with that a little bit, Jamie. is not the problem it's just the pace on the cue ball if he can just control it and come down this end for the pink although there is 30 points sorry 34 points behind here this is a, a really good chance to get back into this frame just asking for the extended rest
one. problem is obviously the red near the blue but one behind the black spot shouldn't be a problem it's 27 behind now eight there's our referee martin royce Oh, that was a kick. That was definitely a kick. It's gone, Jamie it's pushed off line. 11. Well, that's the last thing Jamie wanted. Let's have a look at this. Oh, I think Sean Murphy might have taken note of that one. Sends for some more polish. I mean, he's only frame two. The cue ball was polished before the match, then so it doesn't seem to be working. It's gone slightly wrong, though. I wanted to catch that red right a little bit thicker than that. Well, this is horrible. If he loses the frame from here. Well, the brown will make it 36 to the lead, 35 on, but I think there's a snooker coming. John Trump, nine. Well, Jamie in trouble here. Well, obviously, he's not only going to hit the red. If he doesn't, he needs a snooker. He's got to try and get this safe. Good hit, but that's unlucky to get the double kiss and land there. I'm afraid I think it's frame over. It's looking like 2 0. Yeah, he had a very good chance at the start of this frame, Mr. Blue. One. And now he needs snookers. Good to see so many of the top players here. If you're going to skip any event at this time of the season, it would probably be this one because the prize money is a little lower than some of the other tournaments. But it shows they're all in the hunt for titles, for form, for confidence ahead of that world championship. And Chuck is playing 17. good stuff in general. Just feel something's coming for him. And he's won this frame. Curtis Barrett didn't get much of a look in in the first one when Trump made that 88. He did have chances in this one, but it's gone the same way. It's gone to the world number three from Bristol, who leads 2-0. So he's halfway to a place in the last 64 here in Gibraltar. We'll take a break and we'll then we'll be back live for frame three. On the World Snooker Tour, very busy tour at that 16th ranking event of the season. Still three more to come, including, of course, the big one, the World Championship, which starts next month at the Crucible. Although there's uh, a week of very tense qualifying before that. Three rounds of qualifiers to decide the 16 players to face the top 16. But that's all to come right now. This is frame three. Judd Trump leading 2-0 against Jamie Curtis Barrett.
Yeah, he's kind of had a couple of half chances, uh, Jamie. He's going to start playing a little bit stronger than this. He, he knows that. Chance here for Judd, though. Oh, trying to drop, drop the uh, red in dead weight. Normally, you see the players punch those in, go around the back. <coughs> Chance here. Red to the middle. I think he's got the angle to get onto the black, but I think the pink's available as well. Again, a good chance. Needs to start sort of scoring heavily. I think this might go behind the pack. Well, will it go behind the, the red near the pink spot? I don't know. Does it fit in there? Well, meantime, that uh, bit of music heralds the Jimmy White result. Special music for Jimmy. He's a legend, after all, and a Eurosport man now, of course. And he's won 4-1. He's having a good run of it, Jimmy White. He's, of course, slimmed down, and he's been getting some good results, including victory over Joe Perry to qualify for the German Masters. And he's playing Joe Perry in the next round now, in the last 64 later on. Well, as you can see, the pink didn't fit in there. It wasn't in line, so it's had to go behind the pack. Always take time, uh, these sort of things. Seven. Eight. No, I don't think you're going to the pack here. You should play on the open road. Yeah, it was always heading to the jaw, and of course, having caught the jaw is now over the pocket. <laughs> Wasted no time, did he there, sensing a chance to get into them. Getting the reds open. It's not finished too bad either. Oh, hang on, hang on. Six. Caught that red beautifully because if he had caught it just a little bit more to the left, the white might have stuck on the back there. Just checking to see if the, I don't think the pink goes well, not to the left corner, might go to the right, but it's played on the black. Seven. Seven. I think you can pop the black and just nudge the, uh, the pink away from the spot here. Stay on the red. Black ball. Black ball. Fifteen. Black ball. Black ball. Only reason he nominated the black there because it was close to the pink. Otherwise, uh, the pink wasn't there. Well, obviously, he wouldn't have done that. Twenty-three. Well, this might become three-nil. 
And then that's a long way back for Jamie from there. Especially with the form that this man's in and the way he's queuing. 30. Well, oh, that's beautiful. He's played for the one in the middle of the bunch and he's hit that perfectly. Reverse. Well, I'm sorry, backspin and reverse side. Couldn't have played it better. Well, he can use the pink here now, get into the bunch. Well, the two reds that's nearest the pink spot anyway certainly open things up. Well, that's gone slightly wrong. Still has the red to the corner. 45. Wanted to hit that red fuller. Well, he can play the pot here and stay on the pink, but he's got to be careful he doesn't push this. Clean hit. Well done. Nice recovery. It helped that there was a slight angle on the pot, actually. If they'd been dead straight, it might have been a little bit tougher, but that's a, that's a good pot. Well, it's looking like 3 0 now. And Jamie will have it all to do. 52. Fifty-nine. Sixty. Pink and one more red needed. Yes, and this break came about when he went aggressive into the pack, of course. Jamie left that red over the right-hand corner and chose to open them up. And this is the red that Jamie missed. But it's the one after this, actually, when J Judd got into the pack. And he's so aggressive, uh, Judd. He wants that pack open as early as possible. And this is the result. Seventy three. Chance of a century. Seventy four. Eighty one. This was the shot. Saw the chance, went for it. Got them open. And has picked them off. Ooh, but the red stays out, so it's not a century. The break ends at 81. Front. And Judd Trump is coasting now, you've got to say, towards a place in the last 64 here in Gibraltar. Two big breaks, 88 and 81. And he leads Jeremy Curtis Barrett by three frames to nil. Could have had a maximum first frame, went for a double on 88. And then Fourth just missed frame. that red to the green Don't pocket on 81 in the third frame. But uh, queuing nicely, looks very confident and looking good to complete a whitewash. Well, I think Jamie's got to go on in the attack here. No other way, really. Good part. One. Well, he's gone too far for the black. Is he on the pink? Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, shout out, come on, Phil. It can only be a supporter of Phil O'Kane, who's uh, playing Ryan Day. Trails 2 0. Meanwhile, perhaps Mr. Pink. Jamie Curtis Barrett, one. So, a chance for Trump then in the frame he needs to put the match away. One. Nine. Playing to the pack here and still leave himself on the red near the black. Might just hold actually. I think he's going to the pack. Well, again, trying to get them open early. It's not. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Sixteen. Oh, well played. Again, great recovery. I know we've only just started out in, the, in this three-day event, uh, David, but perhaps we might be watching the, seeing the winner here, the way he's been playing. Long way to go. These boys have to play three matches in the first day, and then, of course, they, these lads playing today will have tomorrow off and 22. come back on Sunday. The problem he's got is that he's so good that other players raise their game against him. We saw that in Scotland. John Higgins did it in their Scottish Open seven. semi-final. We saw it at the Masters. Marco Fu did it in the first round. Barry Hawkins at the World Grand Prix. Stuart Bingham in the Welsh Open. It was a different sort of match, that. There weren't big breaks. It was more tactical. Trump's a great scalp. But he's also, of course, a great player. Just want a little bit more on the cue ball there. I don't know whether you can sort of come off the pack with the black. It might be going into the black. Nicely done. Nice cannon there off the edge of the pack. Here we go. He's missed that one, I think, has he? Oh. Well, again, it uh, was a bit jawish, this, before finally wriggling in. Let's watch where that hits. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they've won one or two we've mm. seen so far today. I mean, it's the same template and everything like that. And then people at home are thinking, well, how has that four gone in? Four. Just, I don't, I can't get my head around that. There's been the same template for about 25, 30 years, but some players say that these top pockets can play tighter in, on some venues and some tournaments than others. I just can't get my head around that. No, well, it seemed in Cardiff, the, the main table there, the pockets were pretty tough, with balls not going in. It seems the opposite here. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, the rubber is cut to the exact same template. 59. Well, it's not been a good day for that man. He know uh, what well, he's a better player than this, I can tell you. And he'd be disappointed the way he's played. He's had one or two half chances, and that's often, um, sometimes, all you get, especially playing a guy like this. And you have to take them. And Jamie hasn't. And he might just be on the brink of being on the way home, especially after that cannon. This is looking like 4 0. 67. Yes, yeah, just the red needed. 68. Despite the defeats I mentioned, Trump, I think, is very confident in his game at the moment. He knows he's playing well. 75. One or two players on the circuit have been watching Judd over the last few months and they're fancying his chances to lift the world title 76. this year. They think that his game is in good shape, as you said, David, but it can get better as well. 
he can get stronger. I think at the end of the day, <coughs> once you get through a couple of rounds at the Crucible, well, Stephen Hendry has said, look, once he went down to one table, he said, well, the job's only half done. Well, as that red uh, again just goes in off the jaw, there's so many candidates this year. So many players playing well, winning tournaments, world championships, a bit like an Agatha Christie play. There just uh, could be one of about 11, possibly more than that. No, a disappointing day for Jamie, though. He, he, I spoke to him this morning, you know, he said he did fancy the challenge, but uh, he's not played his best. 90. But, um, well, you can see what Judd's done. Well, he's poised to make his 54th century of the season. As I said earlier, he's made more than anyone else and plenty more to come in this sort of form. Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. Yeah, good stuff from the world number three. Bristol's Judd Trump racing into the second round. 105. Thanks. 107. Yeah, just, just uh, lay down a marker here for this weekend. 110. Power this in. Screw off the back cushion, I think. One hundred and fourteen. Good grief. <laughs> Let's hope no injury was done there to Judge Trump. Anyway, he, he survives unscathed to say the least. He did offer up a few chances here and there, but Jamie Curtis Barrett struggled. This TV environment is pretty alien for him and Judd Trump.